atmosphere. Yield notebook, the best way. Stylus take his loot? I would like to. Oh, these are... You can move these around. Where do I put these? the clan before my journey here to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. This is the closest any of us have come to seeing the eye itself. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that it may not uh, be entirely alive. Perhaps my old my journey has reached its end. Many of my clan believe the eye called to us for a particular purpose. When I was a child, I used to believe the eye was malevolent. I've lured my clan so many star system to the star system only to then vanish from com uh, from it completely. But I don't fear the eye anymore. In fact, it became my fondest hope to see the eye itself. You may think I'm strange um, someday, but I fear this may be beyond my reach. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. Okay. We do not have much connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. I hope you won't mind if I think of you as a friend. Identify with this one. Explain. I am Salon. I'm a Nomai. My clan arrived in the star system before my birth, and we now call it my home. Uh, hang on. Let me... I think it's easier if we do these ones first. Identify. Can you do both of these at the same time? There are two tenets of Noah philosophy to seek out and to understand as our way of living. Okay, let's grab this one then. With all the blues. Explain and identify. We are orbiting the eye of the universe now, although we cannot see it, only the quantum moon's reflection of it. The eye is older than the universe itself, and my claim believes it dwells in an extremely distant orbit around the star system. Okay. I think I should have did this one right. the quantum moon where we have earth standing despite also orbiting other celestial bodies the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon I've never met one of your kind before it's an honor to speak with you I particularly admire your four eyes <laughs> there are many questions I would ask if I could comprehend your language you have my gratitude for understanding mine the identify stone done with all of those and then explain stone
There's fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale. As one approaches the eye, however, that uncertainty grows enormously. The quantum moon probably exhibits macroscopic quantum behavior because of its proximity to the eye. Shards that broke off from the quantum moon have, have a similar effect, as I imagine you've seen elsewhere in the star system. Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility. But what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? Over time, this has become my clan's greatest question. Insert you. Explain you. All right, one second, Jet. I'm going to grab the treadmill. The you stone. Explain you. I'm on my first pilgrimage to the quantum moon. All the mind my clan make this journey when I come of age. <clears throat> Even though the eye cannot be reached from here, the quantum moon remains special to us, as it carries us nearer to the eye than any other place we know. I've journeyed here to be close to the eye, while the eye is obscured from our sight. We can see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye in the sky above us. In play. Uh, exclamation mark treadmill. Archer. Alright. Uh, quantum stone. Have you encountered a quantum shard on another planet? The shards look the same as the quantum moon surface does now. While at the eye. As it does now while at the eye. Uh, from this, we can reasonably infer the quantum moon's natural state as we see it now and that the eye is its primary location. Given the quantum moon is the eye's moon, it's likely that any characteristics the moon exhibit also exhibit the eye itself. The uh, quantum moon and its shards, for instance, are quantum. Ah, of course. Thus the eye is likely to also be quantum. In fact, the moon is probably quantum because its proximity to the eye made it quantum. The same way the area surrounding quantum shards that landed on other planets eventually became quantum too. Tell me quantum, quantum, quantum. Explain me. I imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I'm not sure how you arrived here. However, perhaps because you came from another star system as my clan originally did. Okay, so we did... We did both of those. with everything, including each other. Uh, some of these are going to overlap, just for sake of keeping track here. So we can get everything together. This one's already done. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then this one and this one. I imagine you've noticed the quantum moon changes in appearance depending on which location it's currently orbiting. For instance, the moon looks quite different in orbiting Giants Deep than it does in orbiting the Hourglass Twins. Because the uh, quantum moon clearly changes in its different forms, the eye, being this moon's primary location, must be similarly malleable. From this, we can hypothesize that the eye represents extreme changeability. That said, despite its valuable nature, the quantum moon becomes locked to one specific version of itself, when it is consciously observed. But what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye? What would happen, Chad? I don't know. I don't know. Suppose you could reach the eye of the universe. Would you try to enter it? What would you imagine the effects of a conscious observer might be? Alright, so we're done that. This one with this one. We've done this one, okay. We have this one with this one. What you doing, Mr. Kent? I found a toy. We've done these. That means finally we have these two.
this is your first time on the quantum moon? It's my first time here. If you come here looking for answers, I hope you find them. Uh, okay. Well, that's all of them, chat. Supposed to do anything else? Are we just gonna die here? Good talk. And that's all. That's all the cross references. Did this with everything. Did this with everything. Then these. Then this. Then these two. There's no more chat options either. Why don't we ask about the uh, ash stuff? Regular order, you know. Somebody else's house got to be nice here. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else. We have to go back to the ship and figure out what we found now. What happens if we leave this planet? Let's see. Bye. Can't. Ports is back here. Oh, there we go. Nope, it just sucks us up and puts us back down. back on this planet. I mean, that's fine. I don't think there's anything else there. It's easy to get back there now that we know. We have to see what the ship says, if there's anything else to explore. Blizzard! Blizzard! Um... I suppose we just pull the trigger in. Devonorn, man. Think of the T-267, brother. Noob, thank you for the 43. Welcome back, homie. Sorry, I missed that for a second, man. 14 minutes ago. Shame on you, Brini. Right, let's reset this one. I don't have meditate, so I'm just gonna reset loop. Boop. Is it on Dark Bramble? Yeah, yeah. Or we'll pass that. Unless we have to go back. I mean, maybe we do. We did that a bit earlier, though. Alright, let's see what new info we got now. What? You know what you did. Look what you did to my face. That's it. I'm at a living, know my name, Solanum at the South Pole. Quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. At this location, the quantum moon becomes a reflection of the eye itself. The eye is likely the source of all macroscopic quantum phenomena in the solar system. Solanum wonders what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye. I mean, I tried. Solanum may have a hypothesis that she's not entirely alive. I get the band back together? What do you mean? You have to watch the VOD? It'll be, it'll be on YouTube. Probably tomorrow. Most, if not all, of the playthrough. Uh, probably tomorrow evening, because admin's got to go through it. But let's just say the full playthrough will be there by, like... You can either VOD it or just wait for the YouTube that's nicely edited with, and all that with chat in it for um, Thursday morning. Oh, you'll see, just follow the signs. I mean, this is the only thing remaining now. These ones are all done. We're done with the quantum moon. So now we just need to find a way to get into here. 
here. What am I planning to concern? I mean, do we just die and see? Consistent. Okay, dang, I have to go all the way back up around. Be a failure at dying. Not my best. Just to get it moving. Statue, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I found, I found Feldspar. Feldspar, that Feldspar didn't immediately join you on your ship and return here is incredibly Feldspar of them. We were never entirely sure what Feldspar was thinking back then either. So we ought to fish them out of that dreadful place with all haste, all radio Gossen, and have them prepare a ship early. It should be Gossen who brings. Uh, Feldspar home. Thank you. You can hardly imagine profoundly ha you can hardly imagine how profoundly happy I am to hear that they're alive and unharmed. That we know. Alright. Just put of extra lore. Like, where's the elevator? It's so dark. Well, that didn't solve anything, did it? Been everywhere, I've been everywhere. I think we've talked to all the other homies of the series we're talking about. Pretty sure. There's Chert. Little Churty Poo. There's Feldspar. Back. I 
There's Gabbro. Oh, Gabbro's on that planet. I thought he was the, uh, I guess we can go learn meditate. That won't take long for him then. And, uh, Bramble. Bramble. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got them all, chat. Huh? Oh, the quantum flashlight? Yeah. The three shards and the moon. stuff again. This year on Sundays you found the answer to this. Made an incorrect assumption. Repeated out loud a few times. So now it's something you've crossed off your list. Uh, I retrace my brain to Sunday. About how to get into Ash, you mean? the answer to make some puns about the word ass sounding like ash and eventually it'll just let me in we're in business if that's the case yes okay Inside of Statue Island. When I created this head statue to record memories, huh? I guess I can see that by doing that. Not sure what for, but it seems like a sort of thing. You mean the statues are recording our memories then? Because I remember that uh, one on the beach looked might be funny. That must be my memory, friend. Found your quantum poem. Oh, the good one. I remember posting that pretty fun, right? It works out to be good 24 poems. So I'm wondering why I just want to make up some quantum art. Maybe some kind of creature sculpting just like shows up while your back is turned and scares the daylight. <laughs> In space. The meditation is the second dialogue option. Yeah, I started to figure as much the how do you stay so calm thing. Stay so calm. Deep breaths. No, seriously, I meditate. Want me to teach you? It'll be the next loop before you know it. Sure, why not? Close your eyes. Um, alright. 
Let's get rid of it's on the ship. About this area. Right now my warp tower is tuned to a specific astral body. To use a warp to use a tower, you must be standing on the warp platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I might notice something strange. Warped objects appear to arrive at uh, the receiver on Brittle Hollow slightly before they depart in the White Hole Station. This negative time interval between an object arriving and departing is incredibly minuscule. The Nomai were skeptical of their equipment could even measure such a small time. The Nomai successfully reproduced the temporal anomaly, anomaly first observed at the White Hole Station. Warped objects appear to arrive before they depart. The Nomai discovered they could increase the negative time interval between uh, arrival and departure by adding energy to the warp cores. The Nomai wanted to know if a 22 minute negative time interval was possible. They concluded it would require new technology to produce the necessary energy, as well as an advanced warp core to handle those energies. Ashton has proposed a location for the project. <clears throat> Later, Archer, bro. Thanks for hanging out, man. Did I remove? No one said cock? No. Good luck finishing this tonight? Uh-oh. Well, we're not too long left in the stream. I mean, we could go, you know, we're going to end that just yet, but... Are we far from? I don't think we're far from finishing this. I don't feel like we are. At least in terms of time investment, but it could take a bit to get it. You don't see it anymore? Oh, did they take it out? It's gone? Maybe the link that existed from 7TV is gone. We need to put a new one in. They concluded it would require new technology to produce the necessary energy. Ash Twin Tower Designs. Designed for each of the towers on Ash Twin's equator. Each warp, each tower warps to a different planet. Although many Nomai were quick to note that the sun is not actually a planet. Each tower, oops, each tower is designed to visually reflect its warp destination. The towers allowed the Nomai to quickly travel between Ash Twin and all other locations crucial to the Ash Twin project. Diagram depicting the angle between a warp tower and its corresponding astral body. Warp tower alignment angles are not exact. They only need to be within five degrees. This results in slightly longer warp windows that last roughly several seconds. You know, stepping onto the warp platform during the active window will be immediately warped. Warp tower's alignment point is not the warp, its warp receiver. Rather, a warp tower always aligns with the center of its corresponding astral body. The warp receiver must be located on or in close orbit around the relevant astral body. The hourglass twins are so together, are so close together that they function as a single astral body with a shared alignment point in between them. All of the warp towers were being constructed on Ash Twin, while the six warp receivers were being constructed at different locations. The Nomai named Poke successful, uh, successfully named. A uh, no mine named Poke successfully forged an advanced warp core for the Ash Twin project. Okay. Several large no mine towers form a ring around Ash's, uh, Ash Twin's equa equator. The White Hole Station is used as a model for these towers, which were built for the Ash Twin okay, Sun Station. Sun Station was designed to make the sun go supernova. A no mine fired the Sun Station but it had no effect on the sun. They concluded the sun station could never cause the sun to go new supernova. After the failure, the Nomai took a break to investigate the newly arrived comet. According to a Nomai computer, our sun has reached the end of its natural life cycle. Ore samples from the Nomai mines on Timber Hearth were sent to this volcano for durability testing. The Nomai were trying to craft a, briefly, supernova-proof shell to encase the Ash Twin project. Even the smallest crack or opening in the protective shell would destroy everything. The Nomai mined ore from the site to craft a protective shell designed to physically seal off the central chamber inside Ash Twin. Once the shell is finished, the Nomai checked to ensure there were no longer any physical entrances or cracks. 